Okay, morning. So, today uh, what uh, we are supposed to do is there are um, two sections which are basically overview of uh, molecular biology and biological techniques which are currently being used. Um, I would admit that these are not my strengths because as you know that uh, I am my background is in physics and the last official biology course I took was in 10th grade that was in 1984. So, um, from the, this uh, material what I have all been talking about is all self taught. So, I have actually uh, learnt it, learnt it later by reading and uh, kind of uh, did not uh, maybe at attending some seminars. So, um, the reason I am telling that is if there is something which you feel in the biology community you do it in a different way or I am not saying the proper way please feel free to, uh, to, to, to interrupt and pass your comments because it is a learning experience. I when I give uh, presentations like that I also learn uh, uh, if there are uh, certain because there are certain terminologies which are kind of uh, uh, spoken in different uh, ways like for here we would talk about the word substrate. Uh, when we talk about substrate in physical sense what you mean is by default it has to be a solid object ok. We do not have a liquid substrate, but in biology uh, substrates can be liquid ok. So, uh, <coughs> I, uh, mm, I think yesterday I, sh I had a show of hands, I saw there were about uh, I think a half of you who have knowledge of biology before. Um, so, please feel free uh, to comment on that. Uh, for the other one, other folks it would be a learning experience again like me and I am hoping that you would be able to retain some of the, uh, the terms, uh, because <coughs> as you know. Uh, we are getting more and more multidisciplinary and in multidisciplinary as uh, the same term word is used in different contexts. Before I start I just wanted to give you two examples in which I had problems one was the word vector. Uh, mm, the word vector in physics and engineering has, has a total different meaning than the word the word vector in, 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 in biology uh, and it took me a while to learn. Uh, by the by do you know the difference, uh, the what is the meaning of the word in engineering physics slash in biology? Yes or mosquito for malaria or something. Okay, very good. The second word I am turning is the word buffer. Do you know what the word buffer means in engineering? That is the biological word buffer, it is a liquid. In engineering you know what word buffer means? Um, yeah, it is used if you ask an electrical engineer they cannot make a circuit without a buffer ok. So, so buffer even in computer is you take the data and store it and in some place for a little time 
and then buffer it out because you can't have a total. If you are uh, downloading a movie when watching it on your phone, you actually buffer it in there and then. So again, it has uh, uh, two totally different meanings. So that is why it was a learning experience and I am expecting it would be the same thing for you too because the terms won't change overnight. Okay. Um, so uh, let us let's start today. Uh, we would be talking, this is the um, kind of uh, introduction to molecular biology which we would be talking about. We would talk about uh, the cell, different parts of the cell. We will talk little about we defined eukaryote, prokaryote. <coughs> Uh, we would then go more into into DNA and we would talk about DNA, RNA. Um, there was uh, there was some time I didn't understand what are the differences between chromosome, gene, DNA uh, and they are all the terms which are kind of used for the same. Um, I will I will actually uh, tell you how they uh, are are related. Again for biology people I think it is uh, uh, kind of kind of a reputation, but uh, um, again, please, uh, if there is something which I say which is not uh, correct, then please let me know. So again, these are definitions of molecular biology, the branch. Um, so the function at the at the molecular. So this is the part which is the overlap between nanotechnology and biology. So um, the so um, we. Do you know what the genome is? That's 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 right. So um, we actually, um, I think right, right now also work is going on what is on the human genome project. Okay. So human genome project is basically you're trying to find out each and individual components, individual bases or the code which. Um, you can um, uh, find out. So uh, these are the, the the you know you obviously didn't start with the hum humans, so you started with something more simpler than that. And so these was the you started initially with looking for some of the eukaryotes, then uh, there these bacteria, virus. So these were the different uh, things uh, which uh, which were used to first study the genome, and right now people are moving to higher, higher organisms. The reason I will be telling you that because of the enormous amount of information which needs to be processed. And um, again, uh, this is a multidisciplinary area where on one side from uh, we are trying to reduce and find out better methods how, how, how you would be able to um, uh, use the, uh, the the database or on the other side we are trying to find um, uh, better software to do that. Um, you, uh, I'm just giving you giving you an example how we can we we can do right now. Uh, this was I'm just giving you a small uh, story when I first came here at uh, at IIT. Uh, that time ragging was officially banned, but still it was there in in part, and I was given during that time a ten. 10 by say I don't know whether you still have that coin which has a wavy wavy surface and I was told to find that the dimension of my uh, dorm room the hostel room based on how many 10 by say it was. So that is what the situation what we have over there. So how many of those would you need to measure this room, but uh, what the way what you should do and the way what I did that time I thought it was it was a better way is measure something big with that, maybe measure your uh, a big notebook or something and then use the notebook to kind of measure something a bigger and then use that rather than moving the 10 paise all around the room. So you use it to <coughs> have a larger block, then use that larger block to find an even larger block and then use that to find the, that is the exact way uh, how we would try to, to proceed in the human genome project. Right now not look for individual base pairs but finding out methods, I look at one block, then methods and then you find basically the blocks and then each block also has its name, we would, we would talk what is chromosome and all and then use that to move from the, the and then focus on the, the blocks itself to find the individual projects. Um, and in 
uh, software terms you can those small blocks could be like subroutines or programs which you could use repeat the same thing because if you have one block which does the, does the same thing again you could use the same program to repeat that so that's that's the way uh, we are uh, trying to work okay uh, we uh, talked about there are three types of cells before eukaryotic prokaryotic now we have added another one which is a new um, part which i found has been added it is known as archaea do you know what archaea is Yes, you don't know whether yeah 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 they are they are bacteria which leave which has some special um, features. It lives in extreme condition. That's that's right. Um, if you um, have uh, this is uh, just a general knowledge question. If uh, you there is a lake in Western Australia. If you uh, look over from the lake from the from a plain, the lake water looks pink in color okay. um, it's not blue it's not colorless it's pink uh, and why is it pink because it there is very much the salt lake there's it's the lake surface is so much has so much salt that you wouldn't be able to swim or anything do over there but it has a type of archaea over there which reflects and it gives you the pink color Again, the pink color you don't see when you're standing in front of the lake because that is it's because of the other dispersion and other effects. You have to see it from a height, from an elevation to look at that. So yes, so these are fine inside mines. We talked about um, copper mines. Um, so, and they have some properties which make them separated from eukaryote and prokaryote. So what's the main difference between eukaryote and prokaryote? We discussed it in the first uh, class when we are talking about it is basically the presence of nucleus. Okay. So, um, if you have um, advanced cells have nucleus and nucleus has a, has a wall over there, uh, the, um, the eukaryote cells uh, do, not, do not have, um, sorry prokaryotes do not have that. So, this is the um, eukaryote cell, um, normally viruses are the ones which are the the um, previous type prokaryote. So these are um, I'm just uh, I showed this picture uh, earlier also. I'll just tell uh, uh, quickly about the different parts of the cell, and then we would be talking more uh, more about that. So um, this is in an advanced cell. You have a nucleus. Um, the inside the nucleus you have the the genetic information or everything is placed inside the nucleus. Why I am I'm, uh, stressing that is if you want to get information out from the cell, you not only have to break open the cell wall, you have to get this, the DNA material out. Uh, there is a name for that and it is known as, again I want the biology people to tell me the name. Um, what is the name of the process by which you can get this material out from inside the cell? cell lysis, it is known as lysing, L Y S I N G uh, lysing and then the name of the, the lysing is you cut cut open uh, the, the uh, break open the cell and get the information out. With nanotechnology, we are trying ways by which we do not have to open the cell out to get the information. You can do it by making micro pores, getting stuff out, keeping the cell as intact as, as, as it is. Uh, the, this has the genetic information. What does genetic information has? It is basically the information when the cell divides is how or what part will take uh, is there and what and also the information uh, we will we'll talk about DNA and RNA also that is present over here. The cell needs energy to survive, so the energy is given in the mito mito mitochondria which is a very important part of the cell. Um, I, I work um, uh, with, a, with, uh, with a company which develops, which is developing a medication for cancer, uh, blood cancer and the way they try to address the blood cancer is after they find out, find out the cells which are having blood cancer, they go in and they kill the mitochondria of those cells. So, once the mitochondria is gone, 
the cells will die because there is nothing. So, they have a targeted mechanism after which the mitochondria uh, has is been taken out. So, that is even though the nucleus is the main part of the cell without the mitochondria, the cells uh, would not be surviving. And also I think uh, you know this special techniques, uh, some people have this uh, disease where their mitochondria is uh, does not function normally. So, they get tired and a lot of they are very weak because and uh, they cannot do any hard exertion work because of their mitochondria, uh, the absence of there is a name um, in medical uh, term for the disease, I do not remember the name. But it had been uh, uh, still now it had been the case if women have that disease, then they were asked not to have any children because uh, the, if, you, if they have children, the, the, there was high possibility that the fetus would not it would it would die because of the lack of mitochondria. So, very recently um, I think it is now already been approved in the United Kingdom in UK it is not yet approved in the US is the women can um, um, now have children who have that disease and the way they use is they use an egg of a healthy. So, a healthy women's egg is used. So, it is basically their mitochondria um, so, uh, it is the mitochondria of the mother, the actual mother, genetic mother on that they take the uh, uh, sorry the cell of the actual mother and they take the mitochondria of the donor egg and put it inside and then that is how the fetus survives. Okay. So, the fetus has the nucleus from one parent or one mother and mitochondria from the other mother, but since the genetic information is taken from the nucleus the genetic information is not lost means the child would have the exact same traits what it would have uh, the only thing is now it would be able to survive because it is having mitochondria from uh, from another source. So, these type of revolutionary treatments are coming in because we can now we do not have to lyse the cell we can take the components out. Uh, again we talked about this Golgi complex uh, and um, so, which is the part of the cell which makes the proteins? Yes, they are all related to it ribosomes is where did I have the ribosomes? Uh, yes, this is these are and then uh, the there is a method by which it goes in and they, they make the proteins and yet and last time also we talked about the garbage disposal cell which is known as the as the lysosome. So, once the cell has garbage that is the one which is. So, just a short of what is uh, the and um, the since they have nucleus uh, the cell division is by a process which is known as mitosis. The prokaryote cells these are the ones which is devoid of any of the nucleus it is it is uh, the, uh, but it still has genetic material in there, uh, it is kind of it is not enclosed inside something and uh, this is how they have, there is still ribosomes, there is um, because there has to be protein that has to be made, um, but uh, mm, uh, that is the example of a prokaryote cell. So, these are, so it has a DNA which is naked. I will tell you what this histone is, I will show a picture again all the terms come in. So, um, um, I will I will I will tell you it is basically the DNA is kind of wrapped around uh, and on certain DNA is very long you cannot. In fact, a human DNA for a cell if you extend it I think you would should be able to reach the moon if you connect it back to back it is that long. So, uh, how is that long thing kept? It is kind of wrapped it is wrapped in a like you you take a spool of thread it is wrapped around and the places about which it is it is not wrapped around just one it is not like one spool of thread there is one spool another spool another spool another spool and each of the spools have some proteins and they are known as known as histones. So, the DNA comes wrapped around a histone goes over another wrapped around another histone and then and the entire thing is we will talk about is a gene the whole 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 thing and when we when we talk about there is a picture I will I will I will show you that. 
uh, but the other important thing is the cell division is by binary fu um, fission. So, the cell kind of just splits splits apart mitosis there is lot of things have to happen before the cell has to has to split um, and then um, again from biology I think you know there are two types of cell division mitosis and meiosis um, that is one is the division of the the reproductive cells and the other is the division of any other cells mitosis is the division of any normal cell uh, in meiosis there is a difference because the genetic material kind of gets from the two cells has to get mixed and that is that is uh, uh, a different process uh, this is archaea uh, this organisms also do not have a nucleus but they have uh, they are uh, 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 a little bit different from the other ones so that's why it's kind of uh, classified. This is the archaea. You can see all the smoke and all, uh, all coming out. I think this is the one which they found it inside a mine, which where the temperature is really high, and um, it is. There's been research going on. If try to, if you can use this and to kind of detoxify or um, because inside mines, uh, it is the uh, lot of the times the miners have to face very harsh environmental conditions. So, if the if you can um, use them to kind of take away some of those gases and not only harsh environmental conditions, there are a lot of methane and other gases which are very explosive. So, if you can use this to reduce. Okay. So, this is um, DNA and RNA. Uh, this is the this tells you why the human genome project is taking so much. These are I will 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 talk about each gene is made out of DNA and DNA is made out of number of base pairs. We will talk about what those base pairs are, but how many base pairs are there? If you look at the viruses they have in the order of a million 10 to the power 6. Uh, this is if you look plants have an extreme range plant can go from uh, close to it, uh, like 1 billion to even going up to 1 trillion and then uh, these ones would be having again this is. So, you can find out if you have to look for each one of them how difficult would it be and how long it takes, but right now with the new use of nanotechnology we will talk about the, la the last part of uh, not this presentation the other presentation is known as NGS which is a word which is used which is known as next generation sequencing. So, with the next generation sequencing we are being able to able to do lot quicker uh, similar to the way where I use that 10, 10 pi say to kind of find the length. So, they are trying to do at larger blocks at the same time. Uh, <coughs> so, number of chromosomes again there are 46 for human, 40 for rat, fruit flies, bacteria. So, you start from the bottom. So, uh, <coughs> what the human genome has? Human genome has 22 pairs of what we call autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes where is XX for female and XY for male. So, this is um, how the human genome is I think all of you know this. Um, so, this kind of gives you how you are trying to get. So, genome is the entire thing. Okay. Then each of these lines which I have drawn this green or blue or each one of these each of one these is a chromosome. Why do other chromosomes are drawn like a small head over here and not like a cylinder? We'll tell you it has has separate parts. Okay. So that's why a chromosome is always represented um, like a head and a long tail. So um, these for humans, there there are 46 of these, okay. and the total number of uh, and each of these 46 if you split it up then there are number of genes and then each of these genes if you look they are made with base pairs and then we they are actually a number of DNA kind of um, these how these genes are made at this picture I will show a picture later. If you look at genes these genes have those histones 
and the DNA wrapped around over there. So, DNA is like two orders smaller than this, okay. what we what uh, we <coughs> so again um, the if if you look for matter matter then you have molecule then from molecule you have at uh, atoms from atoms you have nucleus then you have electrons from electrons you go to down to quarks so uh, these are the ways you go from a big nature to this is the similar way so but the what is the smallest entity for this are the base base pairs okay so this is we are telling approximately how many uh, base pairs are there human <coughs> genomes are the most of the thing are present in the nucleus but also there is some genome in the mitochondria that is why the people who have the problem of not being having enough energy they have something uh, some problem with these 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 genes they, they don't function normally and again these are the ones which are being targeted by the company which they're working they're trying to shut off the micro mitochondria so that is why they had they are targeting these and they're trying to um, to give send a signal that it's it's time to shut off and that is that is all they're not um, so, uh, again since all these are genes you can send they are some type of sensing mechanism some some goes on over there. So, this is um, you go down um, there are different divisions different part of it is coding part of non coding it basically tells you what percentage of things are how many of them are repetitive uh, how many of them are uh, uh, that some DNAs keep repeating itself. So, what I am saying is if you, if you have that 10 to the power 11 all this 10 to the power 11 are not unique there is only if you look at there is a small there is a percentage of about 20 to 30 percent which are kind of if you look at these 75 and then they will be unique the other ones are the same thing which keep repeating. So, right now when people do the genetic testing you, you know when people there are a lot of uh, cases of paternity tests, other thing when people do or criminal cases when people do genetic testing. They try to find out identify a person from the DNA match. Do the person do all the that 10 to the power 11 to match it? No, that is not possible yet. Yeah, if you could that you would have a perfect match, but what they look for in a forensic test or a genetic test is primarily they look for lot of these tandem repeats. What does the tandem repeat means? If you look at a DNA sequence it has A T G C A T G C this formula it keeps repeating after a certain range. So, it is like a code so, A T G C after a certain while there is an A T G C there is an other boiler there is an A T G C. So, these are known as repeats how many times it repeats and that varies from one individual to another. So, that basically what these genetic tests look for they look for how many times a particular thing repeats that is why when they do a genetic match if you look in the forensics test they say it's 99 percent match so that 1 percent there is a possibility that somebody else or somebody else might also have that same type of matching so it's not a 100 percent match it would have been a 100 percent match if you had done that 10 to the power 11 and you would have matched it matched it exactly. So, th currently there are ways uh, we are trying to improve this tandem repeats uh, we will talk about a biosensor um, which uh, uh, has means we have developed by which the idea is the after a crime the police can go and immediately by looking at the the blood sample you would be able to find out the tandem repeats and you would be able to tell uh, uh, the at least you will get the identity you would know if it is uh, related to anybody um, uh, in the uh, close vicinity or not. Okay. <coughs> so, the general structure of uh, DNA and RNA we will talk about that I think you know the difference. So, uh, what is the difference between DNA and RNA?
Yes. Okay, so there are we talked about there are uh, three main differences between. So uh, one of one of them is what the DNA has these type of structure, which was actually. Um, predicted by Watson and Crick um, and if you um, Watson and Crick were not biologists they were physicists. So, they looked at they did not this picture was it came out of out of calculation they looked at the x-ray diffraction data and from the x-ray diffraction data they used a mo used a model to predict it and they came out with uh, with this structure. Has anybody been able to see this structure? with the current powerful microscopes atomic force microscopes if you take a picture of a DNA it looks like a snake it is kind of like one, but still you do not see a double strand or single strand. So, this is maybe someday with nanotechnology we would be able to able to add actually take a real image of how a DNA is. So, but still now this picture we have it is like the picture of a atom we have with nucleuses uh, and then something circulating around uh, we have not been able to observe it. So, these is um, this structure comes in um, uh, again because of symmetry. So, this is one single strand and if you look at it this is this is something do you know of something known as a Mobius strip. Mobius strip is a mathematical entity or uh, where we got surface which always you would be on the same side of it. So, if you make a surface it kind of twists around if you draw a line normally what happens is when you uh, you would be twisting the, uh, the your you would have a discontinuity in the line because because you would go from one side of the surface to the other side of the surface. So, it twists in a such a way that it would have the it will continue in having the same line and it is and you can you can make it with a piece of paper. So, DNA is something like that. So, uh, it sta it starts like this from this side it you, in you see it kind of the thing twist around uh, then um, when it twists around it is it is like a ladder. So, um, it the things that are sticking out from the ladder these are known as the as the base bases which are kind of sticking out from the ladder this are this gives it the unique code these are the bases which I put it over there. Uh, it is uh, cytosine and C uh, adenosine guanine A T G C um, then these ones they have put a different color. Then on the other side if you look from this side if you have only something over here uh, this side you have a have a phosphate. Um, um, molecule kept over here and also what happens to this phosphate and sugar phosphate and sugar are connected over here that is again uh, the when you look at DNA versus RNA one of the main differences is that that um, uh, that molecule is as you say is, is a number of oxygens present in that phosphate molecule for RN, uh, for DNA it, it has less. So, that is why it is de deoxy for uh, RNA it has more oxygen over there. Uh, again that molecule we have the next picture we would which we would be showing. Let me show you the pic. This gives you a uh, better 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 picture of this you see uh, if you these are the bases and how uh, this is a double stranded one I do not um, we are looking at picture of one side of it it is the single single stranded one. So, these are the bases they are uh, over here and then this side is the phosphate and sugar, but that molecule is also like a pentagon and it has or it has two ends. So, um, in one side of it we call it connected to the five end and the others other means it, it there is two possibility on the phosphate 
molecule where this can be getting connected at. So, the DNA is designed in such a way that it always starts from the 5 end and then when uh, this it comes in over here it is connected to the 3. So, the 5 and 3 keep keep alternating. So, it is not connected to the same phosphate over there. Now, uh, uh, the for um, RNA I said uh, one difference was that the deoxy, the next difference was is among these base base pairs in the RNA there is uracil in, in DNA you have only these four adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine in RNA one of these base pairs is changed by another one. Now, how are these things getting connected? So, if you look at it the base this is guanine and this is cytosine. So, when you have a double strand the two things that are connecting them together are these bonds the hydrogen bonds which are the one which are as I said are extremely strong. So, that is why extremely strong provided you do not heat it up uh, these bonds are ok, but as you know water has a boiling point of 100 degrees. So, if you heat something over 100 degrees then the hydrogen bonds are no longer working. So, uh, if you heat DNA you do not need to heat it up up to 100 degrees, but the temperature close to 100 degrees if you heat it up this bulb bends and then you we call the term that is used is known as denaturing. Denaturing a DNA means you have a double stranded and you have split the strand up and getting it into single strand. But if you keep the single strand again the temperature cools down they will come and they will they will they will combine it back. So, if you want to keep it on single strand then you have to do something to keep them separate. Uh, what is important over here is you see there are three bonds which connect between guanine and cytosine while there are two bonds which connect between adenosine and thymine. So, if you look at the strength the A T is A T is little weaker because it has it has one bond less and each of these can be th and because of these bonds you can think of them as. So, um, one way people tried this is these bonds can be identified as charges. So, one way people tried to do sequencing was measuring the the charges. So, every time you can measure 3 you know that it is a G C bond every time you measure 2. There are techniques by which you can measure 3 versus 2 charges you would be able to measure and there are methods by which it is a very slow method, but by looking at 3 versus 2 you would be able to actually sequence and find the entire pattern of the of the DNA. Wherever you have 3 charges you have a probe like an atomic force microscope you take you carry it all over the DNA and the force between the tip and the DNA would depend upon how many of these bonds are there the charges. It is not an atomic force microscope it is a modified version of an atomic force microscope which we call as chemical force microscope. Chemical atomic force microscopes you have a probe where the where it gets do you know what an atomic force microscope is? Atomic force microscope is basically you get the image by by touching something, but the touching force can be between atoms just the plain force. If it is a plain, plain force that is known as atomic force. If the force is generated by chemical bonds then it is known as chemical force. If it is generated by magnetic forces it is known as magnetic force. So, anyway here you need, need these chemical forces and then you could measure the chemical forces and you could kind of track it down. So, if you have if you stretch there are papers where you have if you stretch a DNA small strand of DNA not a uh, thousand times or something maybe 10 or 20 long and you can move your probe on top of it you keep measuring 2, 3, 2, 3 then you can get um, the sequencing the pattern. Again <coughs> how can we <coughs> do it for larger scale? <coughs> um, the people who have done this they have suggested is we could do things in parallel. 
So, with one probe you can do and you could actually there is nothing preventing them from doing like 100 of them going back and forth. And then again by doing small sequencing they said they could do uh, and then add them up getting larger ones at least they would be able to find the tandem repeats how many things would be kind of keeping repeating back and from then they can reconstruct, but still it is all uh, uh, kind of speculation. So, this is DNA. <coughs> so, the carving sides of the ladder represent the sugar phosphate backbone and the two DNA strands. Uh, the other, other, other thing that is most important over here is the DNA because of this is negatively charged. DNA is not conducting that is a big challenge for when people talk about making electronics or uh, which would be inside human body or something. Uh, one idea was to replace all the wires with currently the connecting wires are all metals they are either copper or they can make it with gold. Uh, if you look a pacemaker, pacemaker lot of connections are made with gold because they want something copper uh, reacts um, you, you must you know that it forms copper sulphide and it reacts. So, you make it with gold even if you make it with gold the body does not like it. So, one of the ideas was to make the wires with, with DNA, but DNA is conduction of DNA has been measured conduction of DNA is extremely high you cannot use it at least for. Uh, transferring charges. Uh, it is negatively charged you can use it DNA is something like a capacitor it is not like a like like a like a resistance, but people did not give up there are methods I will that is where carbon nanotubes has been thought to be something which can do this do the same thing instead of getting a DNA, but there are reports where people have taken DNA and have coated the DNA with silver. So, the outside the phosphate you have a layer of silver and so you could use the silver to conduct the current while you keep the DNA still hybridized and the other part the way it is. There are met, there are reports of doing doing that where you can make because they call it DNA wires and DNA wire means it is DNA, but with coated with, with silver on the top. Um, silver yes it depends upon what silver there is uh, silver ions are toxic while the others uh, the I think the uh, silver atom is not 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 toxic they actually they kill bacteria. So, yes silver can be toxic too if it is changing into the silver ion form ok. In fact, I did I tell you silver nanoparticle is the one nanoparticle which is sold the most in the world because it is used in water uh, they have silver water uh, it uh, you are supposed to be used for as an anti antiseptic ok. But yes um, so we talked about the gene. So, the DNA so, the gene it is a segment within a very long strand of the DNA genes are located in the chromosome and its locus. So, what is an allele? An allele is a variant of a DNA sequence that is present at given at each locus. So, when you have two parents for then each one has a, a particular allele. In the so, this is a gene. So, the genes you saw there are two parts there has this part is known as the exon, this part is known as the intron, they do two different parts. One part of the thing has the coding, uh, what you would be doing. It is if you are have done um, any uh, computer programming, you would know there are something known as pointers. So, uh, you can store large amount of data, but you could use just shift the pointers and you could transfer data from one to one to the other you do not have to transfer it totally. So, uh, uh, this one the intron is having basically the information of having all the array of all the all the pointers and all the records are kept over there as the at, at the at the axon. 
So, if you look at the whole database, you that's that's the re, that's the reason why everybody needs a unique identification number. So, if you can just look at the number, move the number, then you're transferring the whole database from one place to the other. So that uh, they are same concept over here. So, dominant recessive. I think this one uh, you must be knowing that out of the two parents, uh, one of the allele is dominant and the one is the recessive, and the um, it whichever is the dominant one. Um, this you 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 combine and from probability you can find out after what uh, what would be the, uh, the 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 case. This was the famous experiment done by uh, uh, Mendel with the with the with the peas. Okay, so um, this is so the most the genes have a short coding sequences the exons and then there are these so so these actually um, have carry the, so the exon intron exon intron and this is this is how you see we have put the 5 and 3 these are where the phosphate things are connected so these are the the main the coding sequences are uh, present so if you want to get more information again from that whole that 10 to the power 11 uh, we found out there are tandem repeats then there are if you find out information in the exon you don't need to get information from the entrons the exon actually gives you more information about that so what you see is in effect to learn more about the genes you don't actually need to do all the 10 to the power 11 yes you would be able to do uh, able to uh, um, or that is something we need to do because we need to know how the other ones are playing and especially for diseases like cancer or other where you have some of these codes suddenly get changed. What causes that for suddenly the code getting changed? Okay. So, it is like a virus, um, virus means uh, not a biological virus, I am talking about a computer virus. So, it is like a computer virus comes in and changes the changes the, the code. So, cancer is something which somehow the code gets the program changes. So, that is that is why and we need to know what causes that change of program. So, that is why we we need to. Okay, so, this is what we call the histone. I said histones are the small places where you have the thing coming in wrapped around and going out over here. So, this is the DNA organization this is what I wanted to uh, this is the the chromosome. Now, from the chromosome say you pull it out the, this is about um, a micron it is more than around about a micron uh, then you get the 700 um, you make this smaller pieces then uh, they are wrapped around these histones places when you pull them histones out make it into smaller then these uh, they make these smaller this is what we call a the DNA. Again <coughs> DNA has another name which sometimes people use people use the name, the name as oligos oligos is when you have short chains sometimes in the order of um, I think up to 20 is you could you could call it um, the the oligos. So, this is how right now when we talk about DNA or analysis uh, this is what we do and that is in that uh, uh, the information what we get there are in bioinformatics you combine all of these information and try to get prediction of what uh, what this is. <coughs> about RNA, we talked about the differences between DNA and RNA. There are actually about the RNAs, there are three different types of RNAs. We work and um, they are messenger RNA, the transfer RNA, and the ribosomal RNA. So, what is the RNA doing? DNA gives you the code, and then finally, that code has to be used for pr production of protein. So, that is what and as the protein and that is how the cells grow or how the body develops. So, that is so uh, these three RNAs do three different things. 
uh, or three different parts of the whole process. They don't do the messenger RNA brings the messenger, messenger that what has to be done that the ATGC whatever the sequence that comes in that comes in through the messenger RNA. The transfer RNA it is like the carrier it takes it over and finally, when it comes to the ribosomal RNA that is where the protein is generated inside the cell. Uh, out of these RNAs um, we right now um, the most important we would we would talk about um, uh, uh, test uh, what is known as in cancer uh, detection it is what is known as liquid biopsy um, which is biopsy is a test which is used for detecting cancer all of you know that that is when you already have a tumor developed or you would try to or tumor or if even not a tumor you would take some cells from different part of the body and try to see whether any of them has traits of the, the particular cancer and the traits uh, I will tell you the next part is how you you, you, you take a test those uh, those would be there. But the problem is at the initial stage when cancer develops most of these tests would come out negative because unless you actually a, a, are lucky enough to get an area which already has cancer uh, these biopsy. So, a negative biopsy unfortunately does not mean that you do not have cancer. Uh, a positive biopsy says that you have a cancer, but a negative biopsy means it could be that you have missed the region where it is. And also as you know for cancer the earlier the detection is the better is the chances of survival because you need to kind of seal the cancer part off first. As time goes uh, because of the blood circul circul circulation it, 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 it develops everywhere else. So, uh, the technique which is known as liquid biopsy is uh, in the you look at actually inside the cell there are some of these mRNAs are from the nucleus they are actually shed out. So, those are kind of freely floating RNAs not total RNA messenger RNAs they are actually bits and pieces of that. So, in the liquid biopsy what we do is you pick up those, those are extracellular genetic material, those are gen genetic material not present in the cell, but the cell when it, it before it kind of gets killed it, it uh, something leaks out this material is there. So, in the liquid biopsy you pick up pick out those and then do genetic sequencing of that and the cancer information is something if there is a mutation or something that is going to take place that actually is first shows up in the messenger RNA. So, you can pick up those and there are cases especially I think for um, I think prostate cancer and where you can detect and also um, I people are working with liver cancer. So, you could you could actually predict it before any of the symptoms have 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 developed in the in the body. So, that is the current test is that is what is known as liquid biopsy. Why is it liquid? Because you are doing the biopsy on the on the of the blood which is basically the extra we we will talk about that when we talk about a nano medicine more. So, what does the messenger RNA does? It transcripts encodes the in, in the in, in information then uh, it is the deliver the genetic material the, this is the most important thing it is the intermediate carrier of genetic information and it delivers it to the cytoplasm. So, basically it, um, it the uh, it, it takes the this is the coding sequence and then uh, the, mes the messenger RNA gives it. The transfer RNA is the next part again forget about all these different uh, names. Um, in the what I was tell, telling you in the in the test of which I am supposed to give you some questions I will be at least I think 20 percent of the questions would come from different terms over there and it would be multiple choice questions and you would have to identify which from here as well as what we did in the first the lecture yesterday about nano nanotechnology like nanowire uh, quantum dots. So, um, again I am not going to ask 
So, I am hoping that some people who have biology strength would do this part well, the people who have nanotechnology strength would do that part well, um, people who have strengths on both would be uh, doing it is just terminology. Okay. So, the transfer RNA and I will I am also planning to uh, give you some uh, small uh, um, uh, mathematical questions where you would be I will give you the um, the size of an of a molecule and um, I will tell you the size of a quantum dot. Uh, you would have to find out how many molecules are there inside the quantum dot, how many then if we coat it then how many molecules are there on the surface. Uh, then from there uh, you should be able to um, uh, I can I can tell you at what uh, wavelength the quantum dot would fluoresce. So, you should be able to uh, do some something sim something like this. So, there I uh, again um, I have not made made the question yet, but I am planning to maybe put questions uh, like one question like that one one or one uh, one or two, because there are uh, people here with biology background they might have uh, difficulty in in, in, in doing those while engineering students might. So, I have to be fair to both both uh, cases. So, I am hoping that at the end everybody would be knowing everything, but uh, at least for some people this would be their strength, for some people that side would be their uh, strength like, like me. Uh, the ribosomal RNA we move forward. So, so, the DNA molecules serve as templates for either these the complementary DNA strands and then they get it to the complementary RNA, RNA molecules serve as getting it starting and getting into the proteins which are the amino acids. So, this is basically how the how the things work. DNA has the information, DNA sends it to the messenger RNA, uh, this is the double stranded DNA. So, from there this is this. Uh, <coughs> The transcription, what this is another term also. Transcription means from DNA, they are making the the RNA. So from DNA, the red part is the DNA. Then the RNA is actually get got from the from from the DNA because they have almost their the same structure. So that is where the synthesis occurs. Then the RNA goes in. The this this messenger RNA takes it. Then finally it goes in into the ribosomal RNA and you make the, the protein structure. So, this is basically how life goes on. Okay. So, DNA, mem RNA then finally protein and uh, so cells, cells die, but this way protein is generated and cells keep. Uh, again for lot of this, this thing is supposed to go like clockwork, but it but it does not in cancer or in other places most of the problem lies in this step. People who have genetic disorders comes in come out in this step. So, something goes wrong over here. So, then that is that is why the this does not stop it keeps going forever or it it, it does something else. So, that is um, we need to we need to find out. So, if we can find out in um, with nanotechnology we are hoping that we should be able to find out what is going on over there then uh, um, we will have a better control of when uh, things come in. Uh, this is the DNA replication again how the DNA re DNA uh, works or, rep or replicates I will just give you with this example of this chain I think that is what you know. you see this chain. So, these are like each of the base pairs things on the both side. So, double stranded DNA is this when you open it this is the single single stranded DNA, but uh, ideally there should be all matching over here, but in real life you would see that if one or two of them are broken still you would be able to zip it up. So, in the DNA that is also true, it does not mean that you would have to have a 100 percent match. DNA there are cases when there are 
uh, like 98 percent they would be matching, they would still work. And those are if um, are the problems which start from there the problem starts uh, you go and, and look for RNA and other things. So, this process zipping up has a name, what is the name of that? One strand DNA, another strand DNA, we have combined them together, it is known as hybridization. Okay. So, hybridization process means you have now if this side was a part of another chain you would not be would not be able to zip it up. So, this there has to be a perfect match between these. So, this process is known as hybridization. Again there is a issue with the term in chemistry what is hybridization it is different ok. S and P levels hybridize oops sorry S and P levels hybridize. So, I am trying to show you all how the terms the same words used in in different streams, but they have different meanings ok. There is another thing which is let us known as process known as methylation. The methylation is can somebody with a biology background explain what is methylation? Addition of methyl group. Yeah, louder please. Addition of methyl group. So what 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 does it do? That's 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 right. So uh, it's addition of yes. Yes. So, if you take a DNA strand out again uh, you know one side is the 5, the other side is the 3. Again as I say I am self taught, so I do not know all the different, so that is the reason I am putting, putting the question up to you. So, the methyl groups comes in you know those are the phosphates and uh, the, the two ends and the methyl group comes in and links up with those. So, it is kind of you are protecting that particular part of the DNA of the of the of the of the DNA of that particular strain. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, I may be wrong then. So, so it is it is it is attaching to all the A T G C all any of any of these. It doesn't mean that it is attached to all these. It's only that any of the one base pair that is modified. So yes. we have a nine structure uh nine base or molecule and nine base six base uh structure in structure. Yes. So any of the base get modified by attaching of this methyl by the enzyme DNA enzyme first rate. Yes. So that basically protects the parent DNA uh, DNA molecule from degradation against the bond. So that this self uh, basically protection assembly molecule. Yes, I know it, it. It is. It is. It is protecting it. But I was. Uh, I, I wasn't exactly sure how ex ex exactly the process process happens. So if you have one DNA like this, then it it kind of connects with all the base. Uh, or some of the base molecules, it is like putting a um, uh, you are protecting something, you put a sheet on top of it, it is that is it, it, it is it is it is ok. So, it would be protecting ok. So, um, a type of methylation it will be only only attaching to whatever base pairs you would be watching for ok. So, again did the people other people who are uh, not biology background do you uh, or not not I would not say biology background you might have be self taught like me and better self taught like me. So, people who do not have any been exposed to this do you understand what methylation is? You, the only thing is you can remember is that the way I remember is it is just kind of protects uh, the DNA from uh, 
um, the single stand from reacting. So, the transcription I told you what is the transcription? Transcription is uh, the, the RNA polymerase makes a copy of the information of what is there with the DNA, it kind of. Uh, when it makes a copy, again one of the base pair, you know RNA as uracil, so one of the base pair is kind of replaced by, because DNA has the ATGC, but in when in the RNA gets, gets the AT and, and yeah AUGC, so the TT1 gets, um, gets, gets changed with U, U, so the wherever the thymine was, it gets replaced with U, but the other, other thing remains the, the, the same. So, from DNA how does it go into protein through the mRNA. So, now just a couple of things about proteins. So, what are proteins? Proteins are with polymers and the building block of each of the polymer are the amino acids. So, the amino acids uh, there are different types, how many types uh, there are different types of amino acids over here, how many different types of amino acids are there? 22 I think I think I think I think there are 20, 22 isn't it. Okay. Uh, again each of these amino acids have different properties, uh, there are twin and they way they, they link link to it and you can build. It is like the periodic table, like periodic table has the different elements, so amino acid there are 22 different types and you can combine and, and with them and build different uh, proteins. Um, structure. So, uh, what is mutation? I told the mutation is mutation is these the sudden change of the DNA sequence. So, uh, when you have ATGC the other side should be the complementary, but somehow that complementary thing gets disrupted. So, that is what is mutated and once there is a mutation it gets carried on the remaining steps. So, you would be getting um, in a different form. So, uh, what are the common tools? When in our next uh, slide, we actually would be would be talking about what are the common tools. So, with nucleic acid uh, fragmentation, netting, getting an idea more about DNA. What are the tools you use to do that? This is polymerase chain reaction, uh, and then there are uh, these blotting blotting techniques okay so we would talk in the next present in the next slide uh, presentation we would we talk about what are these different types of blotting techniques what is the polymerase chain reaction what is electrophoresis and we would be talking about so once we talk about that then we would know that how what we learned in the previous class quantum dots nanotubes nanowires how they can be now implemented in some of these steps and making it improving the process. Okay, so, we would talk about that in the next, so we this is the human genome project. Um, all the information what the human genome project is, it is in it is a huge project, people are working on it, they all the information they are getting they are storing in databases. So, there are um, uh, we are the this is the his history. Um, so, we started the project started in 1990, in 1999 they got the draft of chromosome number 22, 2021 they are trying to I think right now I do not know what, what, what stage they are, they have not been able to do all the 23, but I think they are uh, doing it uh, faster. So, I think they have done at least 5 more chromosomes by now, I am not totally sure about that. Uh, these are the all the information present. So, yes, there are two other terms. What is proteomics? So, it is basically finding out how the proteins are expressed from studying of the different type of amino acids and then getting it is so precise that uh, there are. Uh, experts who does in uh, in molecular biology there would be people who would be st st studying the transcription because that is 
how the things get transcribed. So, this is what the people they are the experts they will call it as transcriptomics. Uh, then there are proteomics and then the there are people who study gen genomics. Okay. So, all these are different sub branches of um, the uh, molecular biology uh, parts, uh, experts proteomics and it get a complete project you would need uh, all of them because first you need to know how the gene expression is, then you would need to know how it is getting transcribed and then finally, you would be uh, seeing how this thing is getting formed into, uh, into proteomics it is. Okay, so, these so, this is the end of this. So, uh, we can take a short break now and uh, first any questions before we take a break. Again as I said if I get questions this uh, I would my, might have to Okay, so okay, we start with now we are using uh, the biological measurement techniques what we um, what currently is is, is available. Uh, for a long time biological measurement technique was only restricted to a microscope. Um, the all these new techniques I, I would not call it new, but if you look at all these new techniques uh, what we would talk about. Uh, we would talk about the blotting techniques, the ELISA, flow cytometry, PCR and then finally, uh, sequencing. So, um, you see um, that is one of the reason why we say biology is the science for the, uh, the 21st century. All these techniques have only come out in the 1970s, 1980s before 1970s and 1980s none of these techniques ex existed. So, during that time it was only the microscope which was used to find out whether you have um, particular disease or anything to do with biological study. We are hoping in the 21st century we would have a nano version of all of these and maybe more and I, I hope that some of you would be involved in that processes. So, you would get more knowledge of what it is happening, especially in the um, in the with the genetic scale to kind of get more impro improved, um, especially the last thing on the get more thing more about the sequencing. Uh, my belief is if you get more information about the sequencing and you know the genetic, it is like um, uh, then you would we would be able to lot of the times the difference between biological sciences and physical sciences is primarily physical sciences you can predict what is going to happen based on some theory, some model. Uh, in biological science and then you can do the experiment, in biological sciences it is the other way. You do the experiment, find the results and then try to see how, how it is. Uh, my belief is again this is my personal belief. I is biology is right now is what chemistry was before Mendeleev discovered the periodic table. So, uh, then you would find every other element, every other co uh, compound means you have to know the experiment before. Now, since we know the periodic table, we know that something if, if lithium works this way, we know that sodium would work in a similar way, we know the calcium. So, once, once this, this part is done, then we would know that uh, we talked about uh, the bacteria has one uh, chromosome, then we would know that how do you combine the bacterial chromosome and go from a bacteria up to a uh, human being. So, you would be able to maybe again do not get the idea that the periodic table has to be restricted to only um, the one with the 100 week in the sequencing periodic table might have a 1000 entry entries or maybe even more, but right now data is not something which we have problems um, handling, we can handle more, more data. Okay. So, first is uh, we would um, talk about, we start about by talking um, uh, ELISA. So, it is known as immunological assays. So, we would, we would talk about 
um, primarily we will talk about these two E L I S A what is the full form of that enzyme linked so the actually it should be E L S A but and the to make it sound where we put the I from the LinkedIn over here. So, uh, there are uh, to detect certain certain um, certain viruses certain elements um, uh, ELISA which actually uh, which virus is detected or um, most by ELISA HIV that is right. So, ELISA was you know when ELISA was ELISA was discovered in 1970s I think 72 or 73. So, uh, if HIV had come in before that there would not be any test to kind of kind kind, kind of kind of detect detect it. So, there is antigen and anti anti antibody. So, um, the, uh, the idea of, of ELISA is you take the antibody what is ant in, in proteins both are type of proteins antigen and antibody there is a specific what we call a lock and key type of reaction like a lock can open with only one key. So, you have uh, only one particular antigen binds with a particular type of antibody. So, that is that that is why we can find out uh, what uh, type of uh, antibody uh, thing is. So, um, uh, we there there are three different. So, let uh, that is tell me what the what the ELISA test is you put the antibody over here then um, inside a well plate then the antigen again I myself have never done an ELISA test. So, uh, I am telling based on uh, what what I have learned um, you you guys must have done lot more experiments then. So, when you add uh, an your sample uh, which has the antigen and, and along with the antigen it it, it has. Um, so, this is uh, this is the antibody uh, the antibody has this here again A G this is something which kind of confused me a little bit I was always thinking A G as silver. But then I, I found out that A G is here. Here, here stands for stands for antigen. So I, I took took me a long while. I was wondering how did silver come in over here. So, 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 so anyway, if you have uh, have an have an antigen, you you uh, get the get the anti ant antibody. Uh, again, this is another uh, when you put in. Uh, secondary protein, uh, the enzyme is connected with the antibody. This this connects together, and that uh, this particular secondary protein, it 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 uh, because once this reaction happens, there is some flow of electrons uh, that kind of changes this, and uh, and it's connected to the to the substrate. Here in this case, substrate is not solid. Substrate is actually uh, something in the in the solution. So, you see a change in color uh, which is related with what, what type of substrate you have used. So, when this uh, thing changes, so when this reaction occurs this uh, uh, relates to this protein that changes color and that is what you see if it is positive. If it does not change, if this reaction does not happen, if does not it does not change then it is uh, you see it, it is it is negative. So, where is your uh, what you are detecting is this one is that is you have to uh, connect it to a particular type of uh, enzyme over here and this is your your sample has to be connected to the enzyme and that is has to be added and when this reaction happens you see a see a change. So, this is more of a qualitative test uh, again if you are doing for more there is another test known as uh, sandwich ELISA in the sandwich what you do is actually uh, your antigen what you what you are trying to it is it is sandwich. So, uh, in the earlier phase uh, this was connected directly to the uh, to the enzyme here um, and, and you actually make 
the antigen antibody already connected together and then you your this is your your substrate when you are adding it, it this is like a sandwich. So, that is why this is known as a, as a sandwich test and when it comes the finally, it is the same change in color. Now, you can remember in the last class we had something where there is change in color. What caused change in color? Where do you have have the change in color? Quantum dot. Okay. So, in our next presentation I would show you how you can attach quantum dots something to the substrate over here and make this test more um, I would say sensitive. So, with one quantum one or two because when it connects to the substrate and where it changes color there has to be a, su a sufficient amount of reactions going on over there to produce enough electrons over there to produce a change in color. Now, adding quantum dots over here would make your thing more more efficient and you do not need that much. Uh, there could be other other places also where you could uh, try to use make this capture mechanism or something um, uh, better we would we will will talk about that also. So, um, these are again um, uh, some biolog biological terms which um, uh, in, uh, anybody who does uh, lab work would be knowing. Uh, the enzymes which is used is this is the particular is the horseradish peroxidase, this is a, this is an enzyme which is uh, with this one, this enzyme which is which is which is used. This is a very common popular enzyme, uh, then these are the different uh, uh, again uh, these are different substrates. Uh, which we use OPD, TMB, ABTS these common code names and see each substrate is related to a particular uh, wavelength at which you would see the light coming on. So, if depending upon so they are pretty close to each other, but uh, and each wavelength corresponds to different color. So, you would be seeing different color showing up and there is a uh, fourth one also which is. So, they are all in the range of 400 to 500 nanometers. So, they would be all in that blue green uh, green range. Uh, how do you measure it? Um, uh, you can measure it by looking at the uh, how much of the optical density it is at a standard wavelength. So, um, Okay, so, before before we go that uh, this is the next. So, here we have changed the A E L I S A to E L I S P O T. So, what does it do? It just looks at certain spots. So, the way this is more precise than the previous ELISA mechanism. So, it looks at the cell the light things happen, the protein uh, goes in and it creates a large number of there in the in the substrate it gets attached to the substrate and co and get uh, changes color, but here it is looking at this at the spot. So, when the protein comes in they they have a number of colored spots. So, instead of having just one change in color you see the generating more colored spots over here and so that is why the name is known as L A spot and each each of these you can quantify these two and finding out how many of these colored spots are here. The next technique is flow cytometry which is a way how to measure number of cells. Uh, this is the part where I think uh, we talked about in your earlier lectures you should know I do not know what um, uh, I think Dr. Uh, das talked about, but uh, MEMS is a technique which is being currently used to do accurate way of flow cytometry. Was it covered in your in your other earlier lectures? How MEMS is used to calculate number of cells. Okay. So, so should I have to cover it? Um, 
this is the, the traditional technique of how to how to measure um, how many cells. Uh, the way it is done is cells are stained with a particular type of fluorochrome. So, when the cells then the cells are moved So, the cells are covered with the chrome and they as as they move through this when they may, may then they are made to move in the single single flow um, the you pass light and as you measure the measure you see how many of the cells are passing in over here and you see the height of the the you are you are finding the intensity as a function of wavelength and you would be that is how you kind of measure the in MEMS this can be done more precisely um, and I think that was already already discussed is not it. I think. Mm, so, MEMS chips can so I will just pass over this these are techniques of when we get multiple lengths says uh, you have different types of cells blood cells uh, you might have the fluorescence again that method seems simple, but there is lot of the times there is an overlap and how you address the the the, the over overlap issues. Uh, the next one which I wanted to talk is about the the blotting techniques. So, there are three blotting techniques southern, northern, western. Again, why are not there any eastern blotting techniques? Um, if, so, there is, so what are these blotting techniques? What is southern blotting technique? Southern is for DNA, northern for RNA, western for protein. That is right. Southern is for detecting DNA, northern is for detecting RNA and western is for detecting proteins. Why did the name come south, east, north, west? Southern is the name of the very, very, very good. That's that's what I kept wondering is how did the dis, how did the direction come in here in the blotting? Then southern is the name last name of the first person who have discovered this, and uh, from from England. I think it this was discovered in 1983 or something around 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 that time, 83. And then the other other things, people just once southern was there then. There was northern and western were not name of scientists. They kind of just coined the coined the term northern and western to make it uh, sound similar. Okay. So southern came out of Cambridge, I think, and northern and western came out of Stanford University. So they just copied the southern and they made it. So exactly what it says. So the blotting technique, southern blotting technique, is for DNA. Northern is for RNA, and western are for proteins. So, how does the blotting technique work? Um, it is basically a transfer uh, uh, wet transfer method. So, the biomolecules need to be transferred from a, from uh, transferred from gel to a membrane, um, and that is so. Uh, you could these all methods uh, need liquid. If you if you want to uh, not use liquid, uh, you can use uh, what is called as a vacuum blot method. In the vacuum blot method, you have um, uh, the you put vacuum here on the bottom. You put the solution, and then that gets uh, transferred over here. So how does it work? Um, the the membranes which are used are primarily all are cellulose. Different types of this is this is a nit nitrocellulose membrane, or you can use a nylon membrane or a different type of cellular membranes. So, uh, again for um, western western blotting is western blotting is using proteins. So, that is that is why um, according to all these nitrocellulose membrane also you can use um, these uh, PV, PVDF membranes. On. So, how does the southern blotting works? is another thing you need to know again I, I needed to know. So, I am just telling you what are rest restriction endonucleases. 
So, it is like scissors. So, if you have a long DNA, you can cut a section of it if you want to study it and those are these restrictions. So, the restriction can cut again all these techniques work for smaller fragments of, 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 of DNA. I think maximum you could do is maybe 50, 60, um, um, 60 base pairs. So, you cut it. Uh, uh, the reason you do not do longer ones is they might get entangled I think again I, I have done not done the experiment myself. So, I would uh, presume that is. So, uh, I have seen other people do the experiments though, um, but I have never done the experiment myself I have not gone through the. So, if you have this it is basically a transfer technique. So, uh, you you have this DNA this is the uh, the compli the, the, the complementary. So, uh, what, what, you, what you do you put this restriction enzyme this thing breaks up. So, this was the original one. So, now it has breaked up break broken down into into the two fragments. Uh, then you put this this these are the DNAs of different sizes you add into a uh, the agarose gel. Agarose gel is a very porous material which has holes through which the DNA can pass by and you apply uh, voltage. Now, DNAs as you know are negatively charged, longer DNA is, is more negatively charged than a than a shorter shorter DNA. So, it is like you are adding different charges in over there. So, if you put different charges what happens they get attracted towards the positive electrode but the degree of attraction would be different, the speed would be different. So, de depending upon there you would be having each one would go travel a certain certain distance. So, then once uh, uh, they come in over here these then uh, what you need to trans uh, the uh, this is this is again uh, the you are you have to always compare it with a with a with with a with a with a with a standard like before um, any experiments in the lab you need to calibrate your equipment so here the calibrating the equipment is known as you have to do the experiment with a label DNA this is a term which is again used labeling label DNA means it is basically the calibration is where we already know how what are the base pairs and how long it is. So, with the reference to that you are comparing uh, comparing your 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 results. So, this kind of uh, uh, tells you the process. So, the mem the has to be baked and put in over there and that is then finally, uh, you would have the DNA immobilized and uh, you would be able to um, able to. So, you have separated it into 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 pieces you have you have moved it and then uh, you can uh, you are uh, basically using uh, the, uh, the the hybridization to measure it. So, the southern blotting where it is uh, it is used it is for every place where you have DNA it is used for identifying specific DNA sequences for whatever whatever you have if, if there is a there is a again <coughs> uh, if there is a match. The thing is I forgot to tell you if, if there is a match with, with, with that then you add some fluorophores some coloring agents. So, whenever the DNA once you have transferred it onto the paper if there is a match with another DNA then there are fluorophores which generate color and you look at these, um, these the color places then you know there is a, a hybridization. Um, these are all this is the most used I think test in in um, in, uh, in genetics. Uh, so, the since it identifies every place it is it is used for identifying if there is a mutation uh, how would you know there is a mutation you have a standard DNA and then um, you can your 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 other one what your say you have a 20, 20, 20 base pair um, out of the um, you uh, say you have a 100 base pair in the 100 base pair you break it up into 20, 20, 20 and each of the 20 you use this test and check for the hybridization. If there is an exact match you would find there would be matching, but out of these 5 different 20s if you find one different 20 is not matching 
then you would know that there is a uh, then, if, then if you see 120 is not matching, it could be that all 20 are different, then you could break the 20 up into smaller segments, make the 20 back into 10 and 10 and see if those 10s match and similarly by repeating this test, you would be able to find out if there is one or two DNA matches which is not working and that, and that, that way you could figure out mutation. But again, as you know, it is a repetitive long process, you have to repeat this test number of times, cut it, do it, cut it, do it but um, that is how you would be finding. Uh, there are other fingerprint in uh, finger, uh, this is uh, used as um, uh, in forensics as an identification test, uh, personal bio identification test, uh, uh, paternity tests and uh, again when you look for paternity tests, you are what are you looking for? basically the tandem repeats what I what, what I told over here, How, what are the, the which DNA sequences are kind of repeating. Okay. So, that kind of gives you the idea of the, the, the paternity, you are not identifying. Uh, I had the question uh, when I was studying this is since we have all these tests available, why are people struggling to do sequencing, um, but the main difference is here in all these tests you are not identifying each and every ATGC you are kind of looking at how many of them are keeping on repeating and that from there you are giving the information. Sequencing will target each and every one of these and, 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 and tell you. Uh, once you have sequencing, lot of uh, there would be uh, things um, that would be related to um, uh, other which I will be discussing next day known as personalized medicine. Um, then uh, this this is northern blotting and again as I said in, it started in Stanford University, so northern blot talks finding it about RNA. So, it is um, basically the same process as that of the DNA, but uh, again uh, for uh, RNA is uh, again what which RNA this test is designed for, it is primarily for doing for the messenger RNA. because. Once we know what the messenger RNA, the tRNA is transcribing it and the rRNA this the protein is going in. So, uh, if you detect this, the other two are kind of already detected. So, that is that is that is why. So, the RNA samples, um, uh, this the name of this process, is known as electro electrophoresis is where you pass the thing through a voltage and you would be hearing the word uh, uh, electrophoresis is it is basically separating the, 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 the DNA according to their sizes and that is basically you are using, using diffusion. Um, it is if, uh, if you know if you are diffusing different gases you use Graham's law of diffusion which tells you which gas would be diffusing more. So, this is basically the DNAs are diffusing among with the, 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 the length. So, uh, that is so in, 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 in RNA um, and in, in northern blotting is isolated. So, uh, then uh, the gel electrophoresis then transferred to the, ni to the nylon membrane by using the uh, a similar method as what you do for the southern blot. The um, only thing over here is then is for better working the nylon membrane is having a positive charge on it. So, which kind of DNA is negatively charged. So, if you have the membrane as positively charged, it makes your thing stick to it better. So, if you otherwise uh, again uh, the word sticking is here is the term uses immobilized which kind of mobilize them over there and then you could lift it up and then uh, look at uh, which one is, is uh, there by either UV light or uh, heat. Again northern blotting, what are the main applications for northern blotting is you are seeing how you can again this is this is related to cancer test is you basically see how the genes expression kind of goes and element and shows it among different tissues, organs, development stages. So, you would be able to find out how the, the messenger is transferring the information. Uh, western blotting, um, again uh, uh, it is 
they got the same idea, but by using for protein. So, uh, proteins do not hybridize like DNA. So, proteins samples are again celebrated by gel electrophoresis that means larger proteins, smaller proteins. So, proteins have, have um, they have an iso uh, uh, electric point, molecular weight, electric charge, these are all factors of protein. Okay. Larger protein, proteins are also have charges, but it depends upon how many amino acids are there, what are the kind of the bonds they have. Like DNA it is not, DNA is one linear, but protein the molecules can be two dimensional means you have, uh, so, so that is why you cannot say uh, how it is. So, um, uh, you use uh, again a similar, but you can d differentiate it among their weight or charges. So, the gel electrophoresis method still works, because it is diffusing and diffusion depends upon the mass. So, a larger protein would have a larger mass, it would be moving slowly um, and that is uh, how you uh, uh, differentiate. And so, you when you look that is that is the reason you use uh, this uh, PVDF membrane. So, then you can see it once once you transfer it you shine it with the light and you can see where these different uh, these protein bands are. Uh, you would be seeing like here they are corresponding close to it here you would be seeing uh, individual bands. So, where is western blotting? Any time where you look for protein. So, instead of ELISA, um, western blotting is used more, it is a more sensitive test for finding HIV. ELISA was uh, is used, but western blotting is more and for accurate detection. Also, it is for diagnostics of primarily a viral and auto, auto, autoimmune diseases. So, uh, that would be this. Uh, the next thing I would talk about is the PCR. Uh, this is the polymerase chain reaction. The problem of when we are trying to detect any infection or anything, you see there are so many DNAs. Now, that is the DNA what uh, like every uh, human being has the 46 pair and now if you have certain type of um, infections, then that bacterial DNA gets added to it but the bacterial DNA in fact is small in number and unless you have the infection uniformly spread everywhere around, the bacterial DNA would be like you are picking a needle out of a haystack. So, there would be so many of your own DNA and the bacterial DNA is very small. So, how do you try to get hold of that? What you have to do is, this is a um, technique which is used for amplifying that. So, if you have only one bacterial DNA, you use this, you keep repeating it. So, what it does is basically takes one strand of DNA, copies another one, then it, it kind of um, uh, like a geometric pro progression, then the two it copies both two. So, you get four, four gets copied, you get eight and that way like geometrically you get uh, sufficient number, so that you could run again uh, one of those blotting or electrophoresis experiments to kind of finding out how much, how uh, these are. So, that is the polymerase chain reaction, I have it, um, it I will. So, you use this polymerase, this particular enzyme to kind of uh, get, um, again uh, PCR was once again was uh, discovered by a physicist, Carey Mullis and he got um, physicist slash chemist, he got the Nobel prize for chemistry in uh, 1993. Uh, again the other thing that PCR has is very important is the temperature. You need to keep the temperature very fixed, because otherwise this reaction is very sensitive to temperature. And so, that is, uh, so every PCR has a very good control of temperature, low values of temperature. So, um, so you have one uh, DNA it's going from 5 to 3, uh, it can go, so uh, you would be copying the other one would, would go on the reverse side from 5 to 3. So, so let us 
So, these are basically telling how uh, you can uh, what are the properties of the DNA, what conditions the DNA polymer is needs magnesium ions to kind of keep the reaction going. It has a it needs optimal temperature, optimal pH and optimal salt concentration co uh, considered by the, the magnesium one. Uh, the, um, so, uh, here again the biological buffer, the PCR buffer provides the, the op uh, if that is not achieved you would not be able to get the. So, you go from 5 to 3 the opposite opposite stand see you have made this this DNA moves this direction um, and you keep adding the enzyme and so eventually I have the simulation I want to show you uh, <coughs> the um, and th uh, this is known as denaturization. De de that means if you heat up a double stranded DNA, I told you it, it gets separated into its individual stands. If you cool it down back to a certain temperature, there is something known as a melting temperature. Every DNA has some melting temperature. Melting temperature is if you heat it up to that temperature, after that it splits down into this form. And the longer the DNA is the higher the melting temperature is, shorter the DNA is the melting temperature. There is a formula which helps you to calculate uh, what should be the melting temperature for a certain uh, certain length of a, of a DNA. Um, the, so, this is uh, known as annealing. Uh, so, it basically it is telling you if you have a large DNA, you break it up into the small, uh, if you the small individual fragments, you need to amplify the small, small fragments. Uh, this is the picture I was looking for. So, it amplifies, it gets first it makes two copies, then each of these make four each, each of these. So, these these ones are known as how many cycles you have to run the PCR. For one cycle, you have to use the, the polymerase enzyme, enzyme, heat it up, do the exact step, then you do, then you do. The reason I am telling you this is each of these steps involves time and resources. So, by the time you start from this and you reach this one where you have 32 copies that might be um, something that you would be able to identify, uh, you might have waste, uh, you might have spent a day or at least uh, about um, 7 or 8 hours or even more to, to do this. In um, nanotechnology all the tests we are planning to do or are currently being done is because nanotechnology is very small. So, you did not know, do these many times of, you did not amplify the DNA this many times. You might be able to do detect it right at this step. Best would be if you try to detect it at this step uh, or maybe you need to do it at this step, then that is why you save a lot on your time and resources because your nano, nano molecules kind of react in this level, level. So, you do not need to amplify it and that is uh, the advantage. Uh, these are different so, uh, PCR has revolutionized both. This is this technique I think has revolutionized molecular biology the most because now you could identify work with DNA. I, <coughs> I told you the um, uh, uh, where the cancer drug they are trying to shut off the mitochondria. Uh, they would not have been able to do this experiment if the PCR was not available. They kind of analyzed the mitochondrial DNA found out then and that is why they. So, all the medical tests and all what we are running is based on the PCR. Okay. Is this the end? I thought there were. Why did it end here? Why did it end here? Okay. <laughs> so, now we talk about next generation sequencing. Uh, again, it is sequencing actually, the word next generation has put in over there to make it more fancy. Um, again, um, sequencing has started 
um, with with after PCR, people had started to work on getting PCR and the uh, the blotting techniques. People have started finding out the different mains. But again, the, you can use those techniques. Those techniques are currently the ones which are available to to make and find out each and every of those base pairs A, T, B, C. You have to repeat the test. What you have to do? You start with a with a bigger chain, cut it small cut it small, cut it small, cut it small and then uh, you would be eventually would be able to. So, the next generation sequence in, uh, talks about a method by which you can do that lot quicker. One of the techniques I already told about next generation sequence is by measuring the charge. If you can look at a DNA and if you can measure wherever the charges are, you would be able to know where, where you have an AT bond versus where you have a GC bond because in one case the charge is more than the other. So, <coughs> what the next generation sequence, this is um, a very hot area. So, we would try to do two things that you need to do, you have to do it very fast, you have to, you have to decrease the price because uh, sequencing currently takes uh, extremely um, it is time consuming and it is very expensive. I do not know about here, but in the uh, um, in the in the in the in the US, even normal tests, like if you try to do a paternity test, that costs you about three to four thousand dollars. These tests, all they run into in, in in if you do want to sequence for cancer detection or something, people might have to do cancer. They usually run to hundred thousand dollars or even more. So you have to detect something uh, which has to do it quick, and the way. Uh, we are trying to use it is doing number of tests in parallel. Like if you can have five different PCRs doing the amplification of different parts in parallel and then run them all together, you would be saving saving time. So, that is what again nano is you do not need with uh, the biomems and other things, your size is not, you do not need to run 10 different, 5 different PCR machines next to each other, but you would be doing things. So, that is uh, what we would do in parallel. We have to decrease the price, uh, we have to increase the data quality, read the length and then we use the software at the end which would be connecting all those. Once we have all those information, then the software will be connecting them to find out the whole sequence. So, uh, these ones and every, every generation uh, uh, comes in where we say that where the third generation sequence where we will be uh, sequencing the single molecule real time. And from here, the concept of personalized medicine comes. What is personalized medicine? It is a medicine which is specific. The dose of the medicine is specific to that particular individual. It is very important for, for cancer. Again, I know it for blood cancer. For blood cancer, the, uh, there is a specific medication uh, which is given. Uh, uh, it only works for 20 percent of the people. The 80 percent of the people that medication does not work. So, uh, the company which I am involved, they have found the specific gene, if they can find that specific gene in the individual, if that gene is present, then the medication works. If the gene is not present, the medication does not work. So, they would be able to now do uh, genetic testing again by spending a lot of money. Right now, they do not have the sequencing, but if somebody wants, they can do a genetic testing and they find out if they have that enzyme if that enzyme, uh, sorry, if that gene, if that gene is there, then they can take the, if they are fortunate to have that gene, then they can take the medication and they are totally cured. If that gene is not there, then it is bad luck. So, then they do not have any other option alternative. So, maybe this mitochondria thing would work later to work for them. So, that is what the, is the, what is known as the personalized medicine. The only downside of personalized medicine will be, the prices of the medicine would go go really high, because the drug companies are not going to make a medicine just for you. Uh, so, uh, it is tailor made medicines, the, the prices of medication is less, because they sell a large amount of it. So, there has to be another way how to, uh, how, to, how, to how to work on this. In the US, that is a big debate, because the price of medicines, uh, prescription medicines are really high and they are trying to find a way how to reduce the price. Uh, 
somebody I have read that uh, as per this uh, Obamacare program, uh, somebody has trying to integrate uh, by collaborating with some pharma company, they are trying to integrate this uh, genomic project with uh, every uh, social security num number of every person. Yes, yes, they are, they, are, they are trying, but right now the funding has been cut. So, so there has been, I don't know, I mean, or it hasn't been cut, but there uh, has been planned to be, to be cut. So, that would be, uh, that would and be. And at least in some states, they will be issuing this, uh, uh, I mean, sequence the information along with their status and cards or something. Yes, uh, right now what is available in the U.S. is medical data is, is uh, if you are, have an accident or if you go to the doctor in Los Angeles where you actually live in, live in New York, um, as soon as they put in type in your social security number, they would know the last time when you had a blood test or what the, was the results and all those information that is, that is, that is there. So, the information they do not have to call back your doctor to know whether you had a test before or something. So, wherever you do the test all information is there that is, that is something, but. Uh, Uh, the pharma companies are right now taking uh, and they are taking a loss actually by, but they run samples on these. So, so if, if it goes their, their idea is if the sequencing thing goes then they would be making more money later. So, 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 so that is, uh, um, that is, that is the idea yes. Uh, right now they are reducing the price um, and, uh, what they call is they call gen generics when you have. Ha No, the old thing is still going on, but people don't know what's going to happen in the in in the in the in the future. Okay. So, who will pay for the expenses? So that is that is something. Uh, I will I will I will talk about that. That is also something which needs to change, for um, the, you know, what the pharma uh, or the insurance companies are trying to do. What where nanotechnology comes into the play is, what they call is preventative medicine. Medicine, is you should not be going to the doctor when you are sick. Okay. So, that is the last case scenario, you should be able to go before and kind of keep yourself tested and so you know what it is. So, right now they are, uh, um, the insurance companies are motivating that by uh, increasing your premium if you do not go have regular checks. So, and these regular checks are the ones where na nanotechnology will come in gradually the regular checks would be you do not have to go to the why people do not want to go to the doctor's office for it is first of all it they have to do like five times they have to go they have to give blood they have to do this. So, right now they will try to integrate everything and the lot of these tests um, that is where nanotechnology comes in the healthcare lot of these tests would be done at home because uh, they would have devices which would be doing these tests at home. So, then um, everybody would be doing this. Uh, um, this testing the and you do not have to wait till you are sick to go to the doctor. Yes, that you go if for certain rare cases, but if you have any other like long term diseases, if you are going to have heart disease, if you are going to have liver disease, you are going to have any other long term diseases, you would be knowing that uh, like long long term before when you are when you are having it. Even cancer you would be you would be knowing that. So, uh, next generation sequencing DNA, RNA, so DNA fragments. So, you try to find out uh, the status of there are um, how many of these they are trying to sequence different animals, they try to uh, right now these projects what we have done we are all funded by the government, but right now the private companies as we say is the pharmaceutical companies are coming in um, this is. Um, so, what is the shotgun sequencing? Um, it is like random uh, the uh, you take different sections of DNA uh, different parts and 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 keep 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 sequencing and then uh, um, that is that is what is known as this. Uh, shotgun they, they, they try to sequence the different of the marine organisms which are present over here. Uh, DNA sequencing has been used for 
fossils and I think you have now come to know that uh, there were two sources of mankind uh, DNA sequencing for finding diseases like Parkinson. These are the, the entire there is a database all the DNA sequences are done there is a right now anybody who does the, does the, the, the entire sequencing uh, it is stored in this database I show you the name. Now, I, uh, we would we would talk about that in the next uh, class the, the nano medicine class is how the DNA sequencing is. Um, so, once you do that uh, the information is all kept in a particular library they are all putting the information up. Uh, I wanted to show you where was So, still now the way it, it is it is working is people are, are getting things in smaller sections and they are trying to find it and uh, uh, you see they make it into smaller DNA sections, they do the fragmentation and then uh, they So, we would talk about this more in the <coughs> in the nano nano medicine how nanotechnology comes in over there uh, yeah <coughs> this is what I was saying is they whatever whatever experiment you do on this DNA sequence you have your results kind of get stored in a, in a library. So, people can use that and build that build up on the the next these are the companies which actually um, right now the starting. Um, these are the ones the instruments which are being used for sequencing. Um, the Sanger uh, these are the five companies which right now are uh, they have invent invested lot of uh, funds in doing that uh, Sanger, uh, Roche, Illumina, Life Technologies and Pacific Biosciences. These are all using uh, nano nanotechnology to work with. So, these com so these are the the current sequencer instruments they look like they are kind of getting it um, as smaller as possible. Uh, so, uh, these are um, and I think the prices of each of these instruments are in the right now are going down, but still they are uh, in the order of like a few hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So, the the idea is is right now this company I know uh, ion torrent this is one of the first um, sequencers uh, they <coughs> this this company made uh, their sequencer is I think uh, they started with 454, but now uh, this is a Connecticut based company. So, that is why I know that. So, this is um, they are in thing cost like 300,000 or something the sequencer. Yes. Yeah, there are lot of buying and selling going on between these these because they are all competing for the same same goal. Their all goal is basically cancer patients. Eventually, they are going the sequencing is their goal is to is to get into 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 cancer so they can do uh, these type of sequencing and be telling when the mutation is going to occur. Cancer slash other genetic diseases. Yes. So, um, this is uh, the Sanger uh, how how they how they do it I have a so see that the here the prices are giving in given in euros. So, this 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 costs 1400 euros this is um, so they the initially they did they do 96 cell then they get it down to 2 then the more uh, expensive. Okay, you can uh, uh, read through this. I have another uh, uh, slide which uh, we would be uh, talking. These are basically uh, telling you the same thing. How does the uh, this the sequencing goes in? Um, you have any questions on this? I have a, I have a next slide which which talks about carbon nanotube and how it is being used over here. So, 
these are some of the slides I took from the company's own websites. Okay, so they were advertising these. So. Uh, I don't I don't know of them uh, yet, but but there but but I know I know the Indian pharmaceutical companies are. Uh, Yes, I don't know what is happening in happening in India uh, right now in, in the Indian company, but there. Yes, in CCMB they should be doing it, isn't it? Yeah, you would be you would be more knowing more about what is. Okay, so. You see, they're finding complementary. Okay, do you want me to let me? I think it is uh, ex explained self explanatory here, so I will kind of stop it at this place and move to the next. Each, each company says that they are doing it the best way and okay, so Shiva here or he opened it opened this okay. uh, <coughs> so right now um, again uh, if you this is actually slated for I think for the next next class it was um, the next class was um, mm, this uh, presentation was put in the way the classes were split the first day was the introduction next day was nanotechnology third day I was uh, inter was was introduction to uh, to to biology and and molecular biological techniques then the next next day was uh, nano nano medicine which was different types of applications uh, then the next day was sensors and the last uh, uh, and the last was was toxicology so i have taken this part and we have some time here um, yeah we, we 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 still have about 20 minutes isn't it so um, that's why I wanted to show what, how is carbon nanotubes being used in 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 certain um, parts of in molecular electronics. You would you would see it on uh, this is uh, again I think in the next day's class it is there. The first part of this presentation is what we have already done before, so um, that is about carbon carbon nanotubes. So uh, here we would skip the first part that is introduction of carbon nanotubes and uh, then we will talk about molecular uh, electronics and then we would see uh, there are some results on what happens with carbon nanotubes when they interact with li lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. 
One of the main problem of carbon nanotube, people who have worked with carbon nanotubes would know is how to make carbon nanotubes soluble in water. Uh, when, when you put carbon nanotubes, uh, they do not form a solution, they are a suspension, they stay in water for a little time and then they sink. So, if you are if you are using that to uh, put carbon nanotubes inside anything, uh, you would not be able to administer uh, how many particles you would want, because it depends on the time after that. So, that is where uh, these experiments were put in over there, the carbon nanotube when you coat it with lipid, lipids or you coat it with proteins, uh, what happens is you make the, the carbon nanotubes kind of remain suspended in water, so that you could use it for an extended period of time. That is the, the results of these two. Uh, what about the nucleic acids? So, what about the nucleic acids? Yesterday, we talked about the chirality of single wall nanotubes. You know the single wall nanotubes can be semiconductor as well as metallic depending upon the way they are wrapped, but when you make it they all come out together. So, one of the ways to separate the single wall carbon nanotube according to that they are chirality that means, if they are met metallic or, semi or a semiconductor is you wrap it with DNA. So, DNA wraps around the one type of nanotube, it does not wrap around the other type of nanotube and then you could separate them out. So, these are basically the three different uh, applications of. So, the lipids and proteins what they do is they make the carbon nanotube soluble and proteins also combine with them and again when you can combine the nanotubes with proteins. Uh, we have another thing with which calls about we will we'll talk about tissue engineering that is a little um, which talks about scaffolds, but again when you combine it with proteins what you could do is you could make um, uh, interface. If you want to interface with an organ with carbon nanotubes uh, you would you can have to go through this uh, in you cannot carbon nanotube would not be able to get directly into biological tissue biological cells. So, you would have to go through this interface. Okay. So, these are carbon nanotube parts which we already talked about. Yes. How much is uh, you are talking of carbon uh, protein interaction and carbon nucleus interaction? Yes. How the proteins or nucleus get interacted and interact on this carbon nanotube? What is the method of uh, attachment? Or the met how, how these Va van, der van der Waals forces. So, it is just when you uh, may, uh, feed the protein the CLT. Yes. Uh, just adjacent. Do yes. Do you interaction they will uh, uh, join? Uh, uh, for 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 protein there are procedures, but for DNA yeah it is it is it is it is it is it is, it is, it is van, van der Waals. You know singles if you put single stranded DNA or even double stranded DNA, you know DNA has that helical structure. Okay, so it wraps around. If you put a DNA, it wraps around like a spring, and carbon nanotube diameter is such. When we say the chirality means chirality depends upon the diameter. So if you have a diameter which fits into the spring. So, that is where the DNA will wrap around the carbon nanotube. If you have a larger diameter, then it would not go and go uh, wrap, wrap, wrapping around it. So, but uh, let us say my experiment is to study the interaction of uh, single strand DNA yes. with some disease. Yes. So, I have to have a single strand DNA in the uh, carbon nanotube and from the disease uh, uh, sample, I want to have an interaction with the carbon nanotube. So, how this single strand DNA interacts with the carbon nanotube? What is the mode of yeah, the carbon nanotube has the top surface is uh, the the graphene sheet or whatever is the top surface, uh, and yes, yes, and and the DNA it's the van der Waals forces which holds the DNA over 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 on top of the carbon carbon nanotube. So there is no bonding which is you if you if you are thinking of there is a bond yeah there is it's it's a weak 
van der but van der Waals forces can be really strong especially if the distance is really small. So, that is what is holding it holding it together. So, you know, what what is used if you want to do some reaction or anything with the DNA you do that and uh, if you measure electrical optical properties through the carbon nanotube uh, what the DNA does is it takes away some electrons something from the surface of the carbon nanotube because that is why where it is wound, wound upon and that you would be able to see. So, if the DNA has wrapped around the carbon nanotube intrinsic carbon nanotube is, is carbon nanotube is just by itself. So, things go straight now if you cover it then in you should remember inside is hollow. So, nothing is going in through the inside everything has to go on on the surface. So, if you cover it with something that would interfere how this on the surface it is going the like distribution. Now, if you do some reaction get some more things on top of it that would still have an effect on this. So, if you are measuring the electrical properties optical properties which basically tells you how the electrons are behaving on over here you would be you would be seeing that. Uh, there is there are ways where people have put additional COH groups on like as groups on top of the carbon nanotube they put. So, that normally what happens the carbon nanotube only the pi bonds are the ones which are which are which are sticking out that may not you say that is not enough to anchor anchor the DNA. So, there are reports where you put some other functionalized functional functional groups like the COH group. So, if you put the additional COH group that might help in anchoring the the DNA more or you might put some charges on top of the carbon nanotube that might help in because DNA is negatively charged. So, if you can make something positively charged again there is no hard and fast rule people everybody is playing with with different parameters. So, you could put different functional there are reports where people have used COH functional groups and they say it is better, but in that we have tried in our lab we did not find as good results as that one. So, that is why I did not say it, but you can try you can put the COH group and then try to wrap it ok. So, but the problem is as soon as you put the COH then it has a role on the then what you are measuring on the carbon nanotube is not because of the DNA it is because of the the COH functional group. So, that 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 might so your measurement has to be recalibrated doing something you may be able to anchor the DNA, but the whole purpose of anchoring it with the with the carbon nanotube is for seeing something is not it for measuring something for detecting something. So, that would be would be hampered um, um, on doing that. Uh, so, um, this is the, the 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 problem of carbon nanotube it has a low solubility and and dispersive so, these are the things that we are addressing. So, the CNT and the lipids. So, this is the carbon nanotube and this is what, what you what your talk is talking about is now we have different part uh, we have used use the the S, S, SDS this is kind of a soap uh, molecules on the surface of the CNT. So, the SDS molecules need to be absorbed on top your uh, so this is the SDS molecule this has a polar head and this is. So, um, you want this to cover the reason why you want that is once you coat the thing with the SDS then it becomes soluble. But again you have to be careful is then when if you are doing whatever you want to do with carbon nanotubes then you have a coating on top of it. So, you are not getting the pure carbon nanotubes unless you are using it for the inside for storage or something. So, these are the these this is the graphic and these are the um, the images you see this is the carbon nanotube and you can see on the walls of it uh, that is the the SDS molecules which are like spy it is like a cactus uh, they are kind of like spikes which are sticking out they have more amplified picture of these these are the molecules. So, 
this is how the CNT and the li lipid int, int, int interact. So, you have the these are the other uh, so the this is the lipid chain which has this is the polar head and the if you go back to here you see the polar head the polar head of the lipid was the one which is on the on the on the on the outside and it is connected um, so Uh, there, from these uh, again, from these diagrams, that they are trying to conclude that this is the lipid chain. Was your was your question uh, something similar to this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that metal charge may be helpful in interaction. Here, this paper is talking of the multiple anodes. So the last uh, slide has seen that they are talking of this. Uh, yes, yes, these are. Charge, yeah, these are multiple nanotubes. Yes. They are talking of multiple nanotubes. Yes. So we are talking of multiple. Then the biofunctionality has a different aspect. What I see, as compared to the single uh, wall uh, nanotube. Uh, you are saying is what are the uh, the results? What will happen to this? Yeah, their diagram over here shows like a single wall nanotube, but their experiment they have done is with 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 with, with multi, multi 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 wall. Yes, this is one of the issues with nanotechnology. Is uh, again, um, um, I should be frank, and is you might ask the question, why did they do multi wall nanotube, and why don't they have any single wall nanotube? It could be either they couldn't get access to a single wall nanotube, but most likely the answer is they might have tried with single wall nanotube and they might not have got uh, good images to kind of show what 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 it is. So that is why they showed multi wall nanotube. So we still don't know what why there would be a difference between multi wall nanotube and single wall nanotube. If we have seen it in in our group also when we change from single wall to multi wall, uh, apparently there shouldn't be any difference, but uh, for some reason you didn't did not get and I think these group also it is the same uh, concept that they did not get uh, the data with, with, with single wall nanotube. Um, so, so, that so what they found out that the thermal uh, stability is related to the length and, and the the CMC. Uh, so, next is carbon nanotube peptide inter, 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 interaction. So, here again they have said it is there is further functionalization is possible. So, you could attach something onto the, the polar head and you could you could functionalize it more. Again it need again you should know why you are doing it for what, what purpose. So, uh, now if you are doing the carbon nanotube and peptide interactions. So, there is a polypeptide, um, there are different type, this is what is an alpha helix is a particular type of protein structure, uh, then there is an amphiphilic alpha, alpha helix where you have basically you need something polar and so when you put this is a, a protein uh, uh, the carbon nanotube and protein structure. They so, this is uh, the diagram. So, this is the different, um, this is the amino acid, the, the protein and this is a special type of diagram it's kind of um, cons constructed to, to show the <coughs> how the nanotubes they will be in, in interacting with the, um, with the different types of nanotubes. So, these are these are theoretical simulations. They, they, say they say this will be the way. Like the earlier, earlier simulation, earlier was the experimental result. So here they have done simulations to show that uh, they made it one side as hydrophobic, one side as polar, and 
this is the uh, the aromatic the ben the the graphene ring aromatic ring of the F should this is their conclusion is a promote that the uh, peptide CNT interactions uh, favor peptide aggregation if one side is polar, polar or the oppositely charged polar residues provide favorable interactions. So, this is their uh, again this is an this is a theoretical paper it is not a, a model uh, it is not does not have ex ex experimental paper. So, the idea is this is the carbon nanotube these are the peptide chains if they have a certain orientation you would see only the one they have with the red those orientations which be getting on top of the carbon nanotubes if the peptides have the other parts they would be overhanging and they would not be. So, you see the red part in they have said with um, here uh, uh, they have detected different different color by the different uh, uh, the red is oxygen the white is hydrogen and they have uh, put it over. So, uh, the this is again uh, uh, this is where they use single wall nanotube uh, and they have used they have a spectra of uh, uh, in uh, that the, the, they, they, have, they have tried to see the, the solubility they have measured the, the contact angle that they are trying to measure these angles uh, where the carbon nanotube and the proteins are connected. Uh, these this is you see they have made initially this suspension was right on the top, but now with they are uh, with addition addition of protein they have been able to make the make the whole thing go into 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 solution. Uh, then Uh, they have tested with that when you put in with a with a salt or you have it with with with, with DMF uh, carbon nanotubes when you put salt the if uh, you have not noticed that it fluoresce. So, if you put a solution if you know whether this carbon nanotube you add some salt uh, if you shine light on it you would see some bright spots that would that would sh that would show up. So, their basic idea was to see if there is uh, a change in the carbon nanotube when uh, with the with the with the with the peptide. Um, these this is uh, the the DNA one. So, what we are so this is what we said is is the DNA is DNA coated nanotube. So, when the DNA is put on top of the carbon nanotubes this is um, what will what will happen and this is used as this technique has been used as a filtration technique where you can take out one type of nanotubes with the other. This is an AFM image uh, you can see the carbon nanotube and they are seeing alternate bright and these spots they are saying is that those are the places where you have something with AFM image means you have something on top of it though they, they this is what they are visualizing that the DNA is kind of wrapping around. So, This is a very uh, important bit. Let's let me let's uh, start this in our in our in our in our next next lecture when we when we talk more about um, the um, other other uh, um, ap application which I which I call nano nano medicine. We'll talk about that and okay. So our next lecture we would start from um, this 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 part how the DNA is coated on carbon nanotubes. Okay, any questions? <coughs>